Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is about three things men need to work on in marriage right now. And before you feel like it's going to be imbalanced and what is it all on the men, don't worry. We are going to be covering three things that women can work on in marriage this week as well. And the beauty of this is that if you both are committed to shifting, to changing, to even small adjustments... It can really make a big difference. And the beauty of our work is we get to talk to couples all day, every day. So these things are coming from all the conversations we're having with people, which means you are not alone. So if you hear some of these and you're kind of like, you know, hitting each other going, hey, hey, this is a good one. I want you to hear this one. It's not just on you. There's not like a flaw on you. There's nothing wrong. We're not pointing the finger at you. These are things we're seeing across the board can very commonly be an area of work. And we do get a question or at least comments in posts and on web classes that what if my partner doesn't blank? Like what if my partner isn't going to do the five R's with me? What if my partner isn't using active listening? What if my partner doesn't, you know, reciprocate my communication style or my requests or they don't keep to the agreements? And of course, the marriage journey is about both of you. But when you think about it, where it has to start is with you. And rather than start to look for the places that you think your partner needs to start to change or to shift, the beginning is about looking at your own patterns, your own triggers, your own, not only patterns of action, but patterns of thought, patterns of emotion, your dominant attitude. And a lot of this is the place that the real work needs to start so that for the relationship, the two of you can really start to progress. And Mm so today we want to talk about some of the main themes that we are seeing come up for men Mm -hmm. and three things that men need to first look at for themselves to put themselves on the path to progressing forward, which can then be its own invitation to a partner. And if nothing else, you're doing your part, right? And you're not saying like, oh, my partner needs to do this so that Mm -hmm. we can... Uh, grow. So you're probably going to resonate with all three and let's start to dive in. The first one is going to strike a chord with a lot of people. We actually had answered a question it's on... It's probably going to strike a chord for the women. Right. They're going to be like, yes, thank you, please. <laughs> we did uh, some Q&A on Instagram stories and we had answered this for one of them and received a bunch of messages like, thank you for saying that. I've needed to my partner to hear that. And so what it is, the first thing men can work on is not just giving affection when you want to be intimate in mm-hmm. the bedroom, right? Kind of... Or res- in the kitchen or in the living room. It doesn't matter where it is. But if you have when. kids, <laughs> if, that's a little bit harder to do, right? But right, being physically intimate. We're talking about sex. And what women can feel a lot of times is that it is only in those times that they're receiving, you know, the pats or like the rubbing of the back and, you know, ooh, caressing the bum and kisses and kind of just paying more attention and being affectionate only when they want to be physically intimate. Mm -hmm. Or another kind of another angle of this is if I give you affection and you always took that as an advance and it's like no can't i just kiss you can't i just hug you and kind of be flirty without it always needing to turn into sexual intimacy Mm -hmm. so that's a a big area of frustration yeah i meant to look up the term but it has been studied that scientifically there's a feeling that happens in the body so let's say for the female perspective since this is about the male's work is okay so if i'm only showing you affection when there is the need or the want i'm trying to express oh let's be physically intimate if that happens over a period of time jocelyn your body will actually respond with a shock Mm. there's a shock value that happens in your body where it's just you pulling away it's actually been studied that that does happen over time. Mm -hmm. And that's when your body feels that physical touch and immediately associates it to 
something you're now obligated to do. Mm, yeah. And it's certainly when it's an obligation around sex, that even has a deeper feeling to it. And this is a spot that you don't want to put your partner in, mm-hmm. men. So what we need to start to do is, it seems so simple, but you can't only show physical affection. And we could potentially add in there just having more verbal affirmations mm-hmm. and appreciation, filling your partner's love account basically is is the whole thing here. You need to fill your partner's love account more often throughout the day and not have these expectations or have it feel like it's being reciprocated. Mm-hmm. Like you only show affection or even show appreciation when you're wanting something in return. Right, because all of those small things daily are going to now show me that you love on me and that you're showing me attention and affection all the time. And and that I'm not always like, okay, great, well, now we're going to have to go into the bedroom and it will fill my love account. And when my love account is full, I'm going to be more likely to also want to be intimate as well. Mm-hmm. So it has this positive feedback loop when that happens. So that's a huge first one. I mean, that can make a huge difference. Let's go to the second thing that men need to work on in marriage right now. This is a big one. Okay. I mean, they all are big. Being accountable for the things that you say, not requiring your partner to remind you to bring it up several times and you say you forget or, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Sure, I said I was going to do that, but I didn't really mean it that much. No, be an accountable human being, an adult, a partner. I mean, that is one of the, I know I'm getting intense, but it's one of the sexiest things is when you are like this, confident, assertive, accountable man that I can count on. Mm -hmm. You know, we did an episode a while back about reliability and it was one of the most listened to episodes because that is a trait we are looking for in a partner is you're reliable. I can count on you when you say a, a happens Mm -hmm. and I don't have to follow up with you a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Or, well, this is from personal development, but if A is not going to happen, I communicate about A not happening, but B is going to happen. Yeah. Anyway, that might sound a little bit convoluted. But yes, being reliable, being accountable, being trustworthy, Mm -hmm. and the things that you give your word to, that you're intentional to actually keep your word. And yes, when you can't, it's more about not just letting it go by and not saying anything about it. Because that can seem as if, were you hiding something? Did you even remember it, well, what well, wasn't as important to you. And really at the end of the day, the only thing that we are, are our word. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds funny because like, oh, well, no, I'm like a human being. I'm, I'm a body. And well, if you got all the way down to it, the only real thing that you are in the world is how you show up for others. Mm-hmm. And that how you show up is perfectly correlated to your word and whether you keep it or not. So mm-hmm. do people see you as reliable? Do they Can they trust you? Are, are you accountable? Are they someone that's safe? And all that comes from you being your word. Now we could go deeper where who you are as the person is actually only a series of self-talk. Mm. I mean, the who that you believe yourself to be is really only what? The stories and the conversations you have in your own head frequently. So yeah, if we were to really get down to it, the only thing that we are is our word, mm-hmm. really. And so you can't you can't build much. You can't have anything very successful, period, let alone a relationship with your partner, mm-hmm. relationship with others, with friends, family, business associates, if you're just someone that's not reliable and accountable. And one more thing on that, just the passive nature of it, which is probably what you were going to say, you need to be driving the the bus a little bit. Mm. You know, don't wait for your partner to tell you all these things that you should be doing. Mm. You know, like clearly if if the house is a little bit disarray, if like things aren't in the place they need to be mm-hmm. in, I know I let the grass go a little <laughs> a little bit long, but just like looking around, like being more present. Mm-hmm. Like you're not just 
relying on your partner to manage all the things in life like take a look Mm -hmm. what are you doing like what are you accountable for what are you responsible for and not just letting things fall on your partner and so part of that can be really looking at all of the small yeses that you give all of the small promises so we have talked about this there's a difference between giving a compliance yes Mm -hmm. just trying to appease your partner get them off your back move on and so you say sure yeah i'll do that in passing but look All those small times that you say that your partner is taking that in and saying, okay, I can count on my partner for that. Or they said that. And then whether you think it's a big deal or not, they're counting on you. And when you don't do it, it slowly degrades the view that they have Mm -hmm. of being able to rely on you. So look for all those small moments where you're promising something and don't say yes out of compliance. Mm -hmm. Only say yes out of commitment when you truly are committed to following through. And therefore, if you're committed to following through, then put something in place so you remember mm. and your partner doesn't have to mother you and remind you and you know put calendar notes and text you. No, do what you need to do to remember that you promised mm. that. So that's the second thing that men can work on in marriage, right? We're not pointing the finger at you. We're going to be covering an episode for women this week as well, but that's part of your work. Now, before we go into the third one, we are given or receiving so many questions from people on Instagram and our emails of how can I get more? I love your podcast. I mean, our podcast is like booming. We love how many of you are listening, but a lot of people are like, how can we get better? We want to learn even more than the podcast. So We have many different resources, including private sessions and a book and everything like that. But a great resource that we don't mention a lot, and yet it's so, so powerful, is our communication mastery bundle. So for those of you who aren't quite ready to do a private session with us, you can actually go at your own pace. Imagine logging in on your phone, if you want to do it on the go or your computer, and you can watch or listen to trainings from us, get worksheets, get exercises that actually take you step by step step through the most common communication mistakes and how to do it better, uh, preventing conflict and handling triggers, right? So we cover all of the key things that we see couples are missing. So check out our communication mastery bundle. It's priced at a really reasonable place so that anyone can really get the skills and tools. And that's at onlinecouplesworkshops.com slash communication bundle. I know that's a long one, so it'll be in the show notes, but onlinecouplesworkshops.com slash communication bundle. Check that out. Yes, and really looking forward to anyone that jumps into the communication bundle. It's really such a great place to start. So let's round this episode out now with the third thing that men can do better in marriages right now. And pretty simply, it's better coping with stress. Hmm. And I know stress is a pretty vague term, but any place you're stressed or feel overwhelmed or anxious, on edge, you know, any one of these places... What doesn't work for yourself, really, or for the relationship is that you just end up checking out Mm -hmm. and not dealing with it. You can't just avoid and sweep under the rug how you're feeling about whether it is work, whether it is about maybe your kids or your partner themselves. You have to have adequate, let's say, coping mechanisms or modalities to actually deal with that stress, with that feeling. And what is not dealing with it is avoiding and just checking out being passive in a relationship and then distracting yourself with things like who knows like smoking weed that's one that we hear a little bit Uh, just playing games just sitting on the couch watching tv porn porn's a big one using that as like an emotional outlet Mm -hmm. we're gonna have a future episode on that as well. But you're so right. I mean, those are the very common things that we see in here is, oh yeah, well, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling stressed. There's a lot on my plate. Okay. What are you doing with that? Well, I don't know. I stay up late. I play games. I, you know, maybe, maybe smoke or I have a few drinks and those aren't sufficient outlets to actually help you process it. Like you said, Aaron, it's a distraction. Mm. And in a way those lead to actually negative outcomes. Now, we're not saying that there can't be, you know, a constructive way to use some of those things or at least something that's neutral, you know, a neutral outcome. But if it's your go-to, 
for stress, what happens is you aren't as engaged in life. You aren't as present. So when we're not dealing with those things that are on our plate, the stress, the overwhelm, the emotion, we are like bottling it in. We distract ourselves temporarily for a few hours, but we're carrying it around our day. We're not as present. We're not as available. We can be more reactive. And so there's a difference between distracting yourself versus actually processing and having an outlet for these things that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So instead of those not so great distractions, you know, a ton of TV consumption, porn, drinking, marijuana, what are some things that men can do, Aaron? There's a few different things, but having some sort of practice, maybe for dedicated self-reflection, might be the easiest one. You know, rather than getting on your phone or any of the things you mentioned, just setting aside actual time to sit with yourself. And there's a term we might use called just contemplate. Like think about the situation, feel what you're feeling. Maybe just start to notice where does that come from? Is that a pattern? Why does this seem so important to me? Am I focused on a negative outcome, something I can't control, I can't control? So like whatever is going to come to you, it's just about giving yourself dedicated self-reflection time on any one of those points, which might lead you into more specifically a meditation practice. So there are different versions of meditation out there, but essentially the same thing, slowing down, getting into a state of silence, being with your true self outside of all of the thoughts that are running, those thoughts create a certain pattern of emotion and experience. And you're really wanting to go beyond that, give yourself relief from that. Then maybe you have better access to seeing, oh, why is that pattern actually still there? Two, there's tapping. You know, if you haven't heard of tapping, it's a modality you could do with yourself or you could have someone else lead you in where it's just, yeah, tapping different parts of your body, typically like on your chest or your heart. And you're really accessing that emotion where it is. It's actually getting kind of stored in your body. So you're wanting to access that emotion so that you can actually move and circulate. And tapping is a great one. You could also do like an assisted ceremony journey. You might do some sort of breath work or other type of session that incorporates a sound. Mm -hmm. Whether that's sound external like a gong or sound bowls. Or if you do breath work, it is important to do a style in which you're actually using your vocal cords. You're actually creating sound because actually at the very basis, all of this are sound. It's all vibration, right? Even the emotion, that chemistry in your body is a certain frequency. It's a certain vibration that's happening in your body. And the real way to circulate it is through an equivalent sound vibration. Yes. So, you know, vocalizing it, making whatever primal noise you need to make. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be hesitant to that because mm -hmm. we've been trained to like not be disruptive. Mm -hmm. And I know that's, that's there for me, like making sound, even if I'm by myself, mm -hmm. I feel like uncomfortable. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm by myself here. Right. But that actually will access that emotion in your body. So those are just a couple of things that came to me. I'd also add, it could be having a specific coach or counselor or mentor, someone that is going to listen to you in a particular way and support you as opposed to just someone you kind of like chit chat with and gossip to or just talk about life. Actually, someone who's going to listen and provide you with positive feedback or support or guidance. And so that's a great thing as well. And I think also you didn't mention this one, Aaron, but this has been helpful for you is specifically connecting with other men, mm -hmm. you know, and, and men who aren't just going to be like, Oh yeah, man, it's stressful. Let's have a beer. Like not that like men who are actually going to up level you support you challenge you. I think the quality of the people that you're around. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. I think we covered that one pretty in depth, right? So these are, we could keep going because we have, we take a lot of notes after all of our private sessions and there's a lot, there's a lot that we're all working on and you aren't the only one, right? We're all on a journey of growth, of evolution. We all have our areas that we need to do our own personal work. And by the way, that doesn't ever end. You don't just reach this like pinnacle of we have figured it out. We are showing up perfectly in a relationship and that's it. We're done with the work. No, because it's each day we're all in different seasons, different things are going on. So the work doesn't ever end. There can be maybe easier seasons than others, but you aren't alone. So we hope that these three things were insightful and uh, 
you know, give you some talking points and some things to reflect on. We hope you listen to this as a couple. Make sure you listen to the next episode as well about three things women need to work on in marriage right now, because I think that'll also be very insightful. And don't just stop at the podcast. This is one degree, one level of working on yourself and the relationship, but dive into our other resources. Look at our sessions, look at our book, look at the communication mastery bundle. So that'll, that'll be linked in the show notes. Make sure you're exploring our resources. Uh, we're here for you and we can't wait to talk to you on the next episode.